The hunt for Wolverine continues, and in this book, they've all got one thing in common. They all want him dead. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is an I review, a show where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. Make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about right now is Hunt for Wolverine, Claws of a Killer, which is going to be starring Lady Deathstrike, Sabretooth, and Dokken, the son of Wolverine. And this is going to be kind of a horror story told by Mariko Tamaki, and it's going to continue along with the Hunt for Wolverine storyline. So let's dive in and see what this book has to offer. The Hunt for Wolverine continues in The Claws of a Killer, the third miniseries from Marvel regarding the hunt for our favorite Claude Canadian. And when we jump into Arizona, into a small town with a population of around 343 people, we see that this is a very dark kind of atmosphere. And unfortunately, we don't necessarily get much interaction with people other than just some complaints about the local football team or something along those lines where they don't necessarily have the kind of players that they used to have. It's a bit of nostalgia that's calling back to a different era that is unfortunately no longer there for them. But one thing that is interesting happens, and that's that the power goes out, forcing two guys from the local bar to go down to the power station and see exactly what's happening with Larry. You know, why the hell would he let this thing shut down? Of course, since this is kind of a horror book, a lot of things don't necessarily add up. Why was the lock frozen off, or does that even look frozen off? I mean, it's 60 degrees outside. Does it ever really freeze? And as they go inside this power station, they actually see something that looks relatively odd compared to what we know, because it looks like Wolverine standing there over a dead body and he looks a lot more like Hugh Jackman than he does any other Wolverine I've seen inside the comic books. And all of a sudden, these guys are dead faster than they even got in there. But back in the bar, we have our local patron who's been complaining the entire issue, and he's just saying, you know what's going to be the death of me? These deadbeats. But that's not really what's going to happen, as Wolverine seems to walk over to this kind of crystalline orb, push the button, start everything up, and a giant green glowing energy emanates from the power station, and it's going to have consequences untold. Then we jump back to Manhattan, where we see Dokken walking into a bar, and then all of a sudden he's sitting at a table with Lady Deathstrike and Sabretooth, a collection of three of Wolverine's greatest villains, greatest enemies, and they talk about exactly what happened to Logan, but the big thing is that Logan's gone missing. The metal statue that they thought was his tomb was empty, and then his corpse has kind of been evacuated from his earthly grave. And the meeting of these three individuals, two of them have very serious attitudes, very serious alpha complexes, and that would be Dokken and Sabretooth, while Lady Deathstrike is just very mechanical in her nature, or she seems to be lacking some serious kind of personality in this respect. But right now is no time to fight. Now you sit down, you shut up, and you listen to what's going to happen. Back in Arizona, we see this person crawling away from the cafe, and you see two special forces, or at least some sort of recon soldiers that are headed into this area, they find that these bodies are lying around, littered across the ground, this green glowing orb sapping the life from their bodies. We get back to Lady Deathstrike in Manhattan, she's recounting the battles that she's had with Wolverine. It's her birthright to kill Wolverine. The death of him at her hands has escaped her, which is something that she is not going to let pass up the second time. Whatever's going on here, the three of them have a priority, and it is to kill Logan, because they all have their various reasons to do so. The goal is to have all three of them team up, go find Logan. If he's dead, make sure that he stays buried in the ground, you know, cut him up into pieces and then put him in a meat grinder for all they care. And if he's not, make sure that they kill him before they do the same thing. So in a reluctant partnership, the three of them, Lady Deathstrike, Dokken, and Sabretooth, head out to Arizona using some satellites to track the adamantium signature from Wolverine's skeleton. And they come across that same exact cafe where he once was. They smell something. Dokken says that he's not here. He can smell the old man, you know, the distinct scent of his father, miles away, and he's nowhere near here. Sabretooth smells something else, possibly a little bit different signature from that Hugh Jackman-looking Wolverine that we saw in the power station. But one thing's clear, they're going to investigate and see exactly what's going on. Dokken, kind of playing the role of a little bit of a petulant child, decides that he's going to stay in the car, but now he really needs a drink. So he heads into the bar, he sees what looks to be the remnants of Kill Team 9, and then all of a sudden, he's bit on the ankle by some sort of zombie. These shambling hordes are going to be making their way towards him. He's slashing them, cutting them down one by one, but these overrun. This town, this population of 343 people, there's more than enough of them, especially if they're in one place place just after taking out the kill team to overwhelm Dokken before we close out the issue and make it into our next one. So the real key here is that this is a horror story. It's not necessarily a Wolverine story. Wolverine is kind of the center point that's going to be leading these folks forward, leading Lady Deathstrike, Sabretooth, and Dokken into this kind of horror scenario. But what we've got is Mariko Tamaki and Butch Geis 
putting together something uh, that it didn't necessarily capture me. It doesn't have the kind of spectacle that you got out of Adamantium Agenda. It doesn't have the kind of depth and, you know, like density of storytelling that you got out of Charles Sewell in Weapon Lost. This one is more of like The Walking Dead meets Wolverine, which I don't necessarily know if I needed. The personalities of the individual characters come off a little bit on the flat side. Butch Geist does a pretty good job when it comes to most of the art. There are a few moments where it feels like, did you really take inspiration from Hugh Jackman? I'm pretty sure that that guy should be at least a foot shorter when it comes to the style of Wolverine. It just feels a little off in my perspective. But I need to know what you guys think too. You know What your ideas are regarding Hunt for Wolverine, the claws of a killer. And uh, we can have that kind of discussion down in the comments. But as always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.